Hello and welcome back to the Road to KSP. Yes, we're starting off with a very strange looking rocket just shooting off the pad. And it's uh, it sure is strange. Uh, we just dropped some asparagus stage things and then we dropped solid rocket boosters. What's going on here? I don't know. Um, but I will tell you, we are launching a Mars base for when we land on Mars or not Mars, Duna, as you recall, or actually, as you don't recall, but from the last episode, we launched the, uh, we launched the first, uh, the first half of the Mars mission, and it's currently in orbit of Kerbin. Well, since then, um, problems happened. Uh, I had my first set of, like, actual, like, footage like corruption like full-on corruption my computer restarted while i was recording the episode i don't i don't know how it like restarted or anything like that it just did anyway we're gonna land this thing on mars and uh the lander is already with the like rest of the craft along with uh you know the fact that it's no longer in orbit of Kerbin. but that's not what we're gonna focus on right now we're focusing on this little thing Look at how it looks. Isn't it strange? I find it strange. And it's working with some really thin delta V margins. Holy cow. Really thin delta, delta V margins and really thin time margins. Um, it is the second thing that we're launching out to Duna on this transfer window. Um, yeah. It's been pretty good this transfer window we've had plenty of funds to basically launch our three missions that we're launching launching and uh, yeah hopefully this will bring us tons of science and will uh, end up you know helping Kerbals all over the place anyway uh, yeah it would be awesome if you could help like comment share and subscribe um, if you didn't know, this is actually a, uh, a, uh, Matt Lown video. <laughs> um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, just do the things. I know I got some new people here last time. The hell? Okay. Anyway, this is the second rocket of the day. And yes, it is a Castilla de San Marcos rocket five or whatever it's called. Um, the second stage this time around is not reusable, but the first stage still is, and that's all that really matters. So, yeah. Uh, there was a problem with the second stage. I accidentally messed up the orbit or whatever, so the second stage didn't get reused. And actually, we're working with ridiculously wide delta V margins on this one. Compared to the other one, and maybe our, like, actual, like, straight up, like, reusable ship this one has the most ridiculous delta v margins this one could probably get us all the way out to sarnus which if you guys didn't know is the analog for saturn in the outer planets mod anyway here we are coming in really really fast towards the ground i shut down some of the engines which i will later realize was a big mistake so i started turning on a couple of engines and I eventually turn them all back on for the landing burn right here in the ocean. And now we're back up with the rest of the ship or the rest of the one pod or whatever we're using. So there was a very quick burn, uh, just normal. And yeah, this was my big mistake doing the circularization burn with the transfer stage it really it really just did not help and we ended up losing reusability on this piece which is kind of annoying because that's the whole reason why i use this is for the reusability thing but i i messed it up so no reusability, no reusability with this part of the video. But of course, there is the two crafts that you will see later with full 100% reusability. 
yeah right here I'm trying to slow it down and it's it's just not gonna work it's just that's just not how it's gonna work and uh, yeah so I switch over to the Phobos rocket and actually it's supposed to be Deimos or Deimos um, I'll change that in the next episode that is the like the name that it's supposed to be it's supposed to be the Deimos rocket and the base that we sent out at the very beginning is Duna base alpha yeah anyway um, I did notice that we were having some strange stability issues with this rocket and I wanted to see what I could do about that and then I just realized that I didn't turn auto strut on it's crazy that auto strut auto strut isn't turned on by default in this game it's one of the most useful tools I don't I don't know like if you want to build anything really you have to use auto strut at some point or you just can't or the Kraken just takes over and it destroys everything it's pretty annoying anyway we are almost done with this very long burn yeah this one has some really long burns uh, it's because I have a really efficient engine hauling a very heavy load all the way out to Duna in one burn not the best idea but it's fine uh, and now I'm going to make a maneuver node that gets us in line with our eventual target um, whatever the name of that moon is again oh no what is the name of that moon block right block Anyway, with Duna's moon. Um, here we are, actually quickly approaching the uh, the next, well, the moon itself. Yeah, there was a cut there. <laughs> this is it, uh, several hundred days later, actually doing the mission that it's supposed to be doing. And it right now it's just... Uh, taking a lot of data and circularizing around Duna's moon. It's, uh, it's a good view. Like, I, I just stay on this view for a little bit. Uh, this whole burn itself was probably near about a minute and a half. As you can tell, like, five times speed, it's still pretty quick. Or still pretty lengthy. And... Yeah, like it's 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 a very lengthy burn. Um, thank God we'll be. Oh, yep, here we are. Here is the craft that we have been waiting to look at. This is it. This is um, the KSS Jarby Star, and its lander. Um, I forgot what the lander's name was. Uh, sorry, I'm operating on literally no sleep. The lander's name was... Oof. Well, I'll... F I'll when we use the lander again in the next episode, I'll actually be able to do anything about that. Anyways, um... There is Artemis 1 this weekend. I'm actually going to go in person, um, or at least try to go in person. It's going to be early in the morning. Uh, well, I need to get there early in the morning. I'm trying to be at uh, Playa Linda Beach. So that'll be fun. And if you're, uh, if you're, you know, reaching this part of the video, I'm going to drop a poll if you guys like to see some video from, you know, Playa Linda Beach, which is only about, um, uh, about five miles from the launch sites themselves and it's actually pretty great like I that's where I watched the Falcon Heavy launch the first Falcon Heavy launch from anyway we're getting this really long nice burn um, of the uh, circularization around Duna uh, that nuclear engine super efficient it's so nice 
Um, also, some things you probably no noticed about the lander. It has one engine, and it's a nuclear engine. Yeah. We're going to be trying to land a nuclear-powered lander, which we have not done before. Um, it's supposed to have enough thrust-to-weight ratio, but honestly, it's kind of worrying me, so we're going to take it really safe. There's a couple of parachutes on board, and those are set to go off really high, so they'll slow down our overall speed. And we'll be able to land with the very wide land landing leg base there is. Using those uh, Falcon <laughs> heavy landing legs. Uh, I actually had to take the guy out to... Uh, well, what is his name? Uh, Shegbus Kerman? I had to take Shegbus out and actually do all uh, collect all the experiments. Because I don't have one of those experiment collecting modules. That was an oversight. And I probably should have done that. Anyway, if you like this video, please... You know, leave a comment, subscribe, all of the things. And thank you guys, and I will see you guys next time.